So I was just listening to a podcast and they're talking about the Vietnam War and how like a lot of soldiers basically got sacrificed because that's what basically came down to. A bunch of people getting sacrificed, not prepared for a war, not ready to fight. And then either coming back with some addiction or mental problem or a very slim chance of one to two percent, you know, coming back fine from not coming back at all. I think I, I think I know what the problem was, honestly. I, I have a theory, and I think this theory is pretty good, and this theory could actually help come up with the ideas to make the military stronger and those who participate in war stronger as well. Because when it comes down to it, it's like only like three people, honestly, or three, four people at most, should know these basics right here what I'm about to share with you because they're top dogs, the generals, the leaders, you know, the people that call it shot callers, whatever you want to call them. Because that's where the problem lies with at the moment is that, or well, back in the Vietnam War, I think, because like it was like people that were like saying, all right, go do this mission, even though it was like an impossible mission, sort of. And, um, it was basically a suicide mission, if anything. You know, the reason being is because that person that's calling that shot or making that decision, they wouldn't be able to do it themselves or they wouldn't be willing to do it themselves. So therefore, that's where the problem lies. If it was someone smart and wise that were like, okay, if I can go and claim this territory and, you know, get out of it safe and alive, I'm pretty sure my men can too. So I'm going to send them in to do this mission because it seems like a good idea. I think that's where the problem lies, honestly. They needed smart, more smart, smart generals when it came down to it. People that were calling the shots. Because I'm sure there was times where it was like good times to attack and then bad times to attack because that's life, you know. You're not, you're not going to have a troop that's going to be 100% 24-7. That's physically impossible. They... They've proven that, you know, with their medications and stuff. There needs to be rest for the body in order to have a long and healthy life. And you think people are going to sacrifice that? Even the fight? Some might, but not all. Of course, another problem lies with the soldiers. It's soldiers, hand, not hand in hand picked, but randomly picked. Uh, from the bottom of the food chain, you know, if anything, if you, the way to think of it, like lower class, poor people, to insane or insane people, or even uh, the mentally disabled people, or even the young people that are just turning into young adults. And then even back then it was worse because they they straight up use. Uh, Immigrants, basically, immigrants or colored people, that put, that be picking up first, that be throwing in the war, like because. Around like, I think before, like around the, in the medieval times, or even in the like the Viking times and pirate times, like that, they had better war generals. They're making better calls and stuff like calls that they, they called and they made an accomplishment. For example. There was this one troop on this island. I don't even know if it was a troop, it might have just been one guy. But either way, it was either three people or one guy. And they, they were stationed on this island to protect it and to make sure the, the sea around it was cleared at all time. And he, he went crazy. And then because they didn't feed him enough over there, they weren't seeing enough supplies for him and his troops. So, oh, I know it was his troop got split in half. Like half of them decided to leave the island and surrender to the enemies. I think it was, I know it wasn't even the enemies. It was like, it was, it's a crazy story. It's Americans that, like there's just this one American troop that went AWOL basically, uh, insane, crazy, like, you know, on their own path. And they wanted to claim the island for themselves and for the people. So what they did was, is they had to stand off with their own army and stuff and this, and our army and military took it as no joke, we took it as terrorism. Because that's basically what it seemed like and looked like. So, bombarding the island, 
even though there's only four or five guys on there, before they send in the troops on there, they bombed the heck out of it. And the thing was, it was a small island with a small castle in it and trenches dug all around the castle. Uh, not a castle, but a giant prison, I think. That looked like a castle. But man, that's a crazy war that happened there. Not, it wasn't even, it was just a little skirmish. It was a little fight. And it was between our, our own people. It was hilarious when you think about it, back on it. But when you think really back on it, it's like, that's pretty heroic. Like, who has the guts to do that? They're standing up against a whole military, even though it was just three or four guys. And all they were demanding were was extra food. Like, they went insane because they weren't getting enough supplies. So eventually they thought, all right, if they don't want to give us the supplies, then we're going to take this land as payment, you know, until they do pay up the supplies that they owe us. And eventually they, you know, they went insane, so they wanted more and more than just food. They were asking for, like, gold and extra weapons. So they fought until they ran out of ammo, basically. And um, it was it's funny because, like, there were certain points, like, on certain days. It went on for, like, two months. But on certain days, they are like, they actually America send them food because they didn't want these guys to starve and you know they wanted they, they it, it seemed like they wanted to take them alive but when you look back at it they're bombarding them with like basically cannons and stuff like that you know so they were fighting them pretty hard it was like this like when it was all over with, the island was they had no not prison on it. It didn't even have trenches on it. All it had was rubble. So once again, that goes and lies because, well, where does the soldiers come from? They come from the lower income. And, you know, they're not always that bright when it comes down to it. Now, of course, there's like a, over time, and now there's like a bigger percentage of probably 20% at most of people that join the army or military that's rich and or like ready to go like prepared you know trained their most or half not most of their life but a good you know decade of their life or something like that prepared but that's only 20 percent of the people that's and that's a problem a lot of the other people choose that branch because it's a very expensive uh, payout of a branch you know they do it for the money and next thing you know well, you're, you're back at where you started yet. You're, the, this time, you're not taking the poor people and putting them in this war. They're actually deciding to go in this war for the money. So you're basically back where you started with the soldiers. You're not, like our soldiers, are, we got good equipment. It's just the war generals are basically people that ba probably bought into it or something like that it seems like you know or born into it when they should have been people that are wanting the job and knowing how to do the job leadership wise you know if they if they think they can't do that mission that they're sending their troops on that that means that is a bad leader right there because the best leaders will do this they'll sit there and think like okay Am I able to do this with three to four men, you know, myself? Like, even a smaller part of the, not the whole troop, but like a small group, you know? And if they're like, I could get this done, or even if they're like, if I could get this done, but we'll probably die in the process, but we'll still get the job done. And the, if they're willing to do that, you know, that's a good leader right there. But if they think like, ah, oh, there's no way I could even do this myself, but probably my men could because they're trained for this. If they think like that, that's a bad leader right there. And that's, I think that's where the problem lied with the Vietnam War, honestly. If they had better leaderships and more ready sh soldiers, it'd probably be a whole different outcome, who knows. But then again, it would come down to the number game as well. And that, we can't really say because it's not like we're using all our numbers against all their numbers. What usually it comes down to is we're using a portion of our full numbers against a full portion of every, or, you know, 